So today we've been asked to find the value of the six trigonometric functions of the angle theta given that theta is the smallest possible positive angle with the point 1 comma negative root 3 on its terminal side. So the first thing I want to do is draw this angle. So I take and draw and uh, yeah, most of the time they'll tell you it's in standard position. If they don't, we assume it's in standard position. So we've got an x, y coordinate axis and the initial side is always going to be on the x axis and the terminal side is always going to be somewhere off into a quadrant. Now, uh, 1 comma negative root 3, so that's going to be 1 this way and down negative root 3. So I'm going to make that point, okay? I'm going to make that point right here. So that's 1 comma negative root 3. Okay? Now what that's really telling me, okay, what that's really telling me, I'm going to kind of take this picture and zoom in. What that's really telling me is I've got a triangle that looks like this. This is 1 and this is negative root 3. And theta goes this way. Okay, so if you go back to my original picture, theta goes from the initial side to the terminal side. That's theta. And what I teach my classes to do is use the reference angle, which is theta prime. Okay, uh, th this angle here is going to be greater than 270 degrees. It's a very large angle. And I really like to use the right triangle definitions of my trig functions. And so if I use theta prime, I can fit it inside of a right triangle. And so, and, and if you have been in a trigonometry class before, if you know anything about this, the value of theta prime and the value of theta are identical. They're identical in terms of the sine of theta, the cosine of theta, the tangent of theta. The only difference is theta prime is typically a smaller angle. So anyway, uh, on and about, basically the sine of theta prime will be equal to the sine of theta. And uh, if you don't believe me, you can actually uh, try it on uh, a calculator, okay? And I'll show you that here in, in just a moment, okay? Um, so anyway, tangent and then uh, cosecant and secant and cotangent, okay? Cotangent. All right. So now I go back to my picture. Here's my picture. I've got one. I've got negative root 3. I need to find the third side. We're going to use Pythagorean's theorem. So we're going to say a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is going to give me what? 1 squared plus negative root 3 squared equals c squared. And what I'm going to end up with for this side, if I square this, I get 1. If I square this, I get 3. And 1 plus 3 makes 4. Take the square of that, you get 2. Okay? So, uh, that's what we're going to end up with, okay? Now, once I know these three, if I look at theta prime, this is going to be the opposite side because it's across from theta prime. This is going to be the adjacent side because it's next to theta prime. And since this guy's across from my 90 degree angle, this is going to be my hypotenuse. And so our right triangle definitions of sine and cosine and tangent work very nicely with the picture we've drawn, okay? So, the sine of theta or theta prime, okay, sine of theta or theta prime, either one, um, is always going to be defined as opposite over adjacent, okay? So, uh, excuse me, opposite over hypotenuse, tangents, opposite over adjacent. So, sine of theta, and I always like to write it out, sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, okay? Well now, what, what did you label as opposite? What did you label as hypotenuse? So it's negative root 3 over 2. Negative root 3 over 2. There's sine of theta. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, what did you label as adjacent? Right? 1, 2. Oh, 1 half. Yep. And tangent is opposite over adjacent, okay? Opposite over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent. Negative root 3 over 1, which is just negative root 3, okay? And um, 
just I want to stop for a second because I think a lot of people when they're learning trigonometry they learn uh, SOHCAHTOA so S-O-H sine is opposite over hypotenuse cosine adjacent over hypotenuse tangents opposite over adjacent I want to tell you the way that I learned these and it's not SOHCAHTOA and the reason I didn't learn it that way is because uh, I never knew where to put the O and where to put the A Sokotoa, Sakotoa, I don't know. So, um, the way I learned this is some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. And so, if I ever wonder what is sign again, some old hippie, sign is opposite over hypotenuse, caught another hippie, C A H, tripping on acid. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So, that's how I remember my trig functions and I think it's really really easy to remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse tangents opposite over adjacent. Now the other three are really really easy. These are called recipro uh, use reciprocal identities. Uh, cosecant, secant, and cotangent are just the reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. And So what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy, take the sine value and flip it so we get negative 2 over root 3 and of course we have to rationalize that okay so if we rationalize that um, let me just zoom in a little bit here if we rationalize that uh, we're gonna get negative 2 root 3 over 3 okay and then secant is gonna be the reciprocal of cosine well cosine's one half if I flip that I just get 2 so ta-da and then uh, tangent was negative root 3 over 1 so I'm going to flip this and get negative 1 over root 3. And of course, if I rationalize that, I get negative root 3 over 3. Okay, so that's how we find our six trig functions. Now, just for fun, uh, I want to show you what I was talking about earlier with theta prime and theta. Okay, so you take your handy dandy calculator here. I have a TI-84. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It can be any calculator. You want to go to mode. Um, it matters whether you're in radian or degree mode. And I'm in degree mode, so I'm going to use degrees for an example here. So um, uh, let's take an angle, okay? Let's just, I like to draw it out. So let's take an angle. Let's say we've got uh, uh, some angle that's in quadrant four, okay? Um, let's take 330 degrees, okay? 330 degrees. Okay, and um, just that's theta, and of course we know that uh, 330 plus another 30 makes 360, so theta prime would be 30 degrees, okay? And I was telling you earlier it doesn't matter if you're finding theta or theta prime, uh, the trick is the sign. So here goes. Here's my graphing calculator. And I want to just take the sine of 330 degrees, and I get negative 0.5, okay? Um, if I take the sine of 30 degrees, I get the same value. The sine is different because my calculator thinks I'm in quadrant 1. I'm actually in quadrant 4. So the value is the same. The only thing that changes is the sine, uh, whether it's negative or positive. Um, take, for an example, cosine of 330 is going to be positive 0.866. Cosine of 30, also 0.866. Okay? Um, and then if I just wanted to do tangent of 330, okay, and tangent of 30. Notice it's the same number. The only thing that changes is the sign. So what I tell my students is you have to remember a little acronym. Okay? All students... All students take calculus. Okay? And this is, this little acronym helps you remember if you're using reference angles what happens. Okay? So one, two, three, four. Okay? One, two, three, four. This means all three trig functions. Are positive in quadrant one. This means that sine is positive in quadrant two, tangent is positive in quadrant three, and cosine is positive in quadrant four. Okay, so if cosine is positive, 
sine and tangent are negative. Now, what that does for me is I have a 30 degree reference angle, but it's in quadrant four. And so when I say, okay, well, I'm going to find the sine of 30, that's my reference angle, and I get 0.5. Since this is in quadrant four, I know to just put a negative in front of that. So I was speaking of reference angles, and I just want to make sure you understand that 330 and 30 give the same value. The only difference is, is it negative or is it positive? And this little acronym can help you decide that. So anyway, it's a whole lot of trigonometry in one video. Um, this would be kind of the beginning of, of pretty much any college trigonometry class. So I hope it helps you out, and if you have any questions, please let me know.